morning, Harvest Church. Go ahead and stand to your feet as we sing together. Worship the Lord together. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the will that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table, he will satisfy. on the world, the nations of the world. We are going to be partaking 
of communion together. If you're in the house, you got a packet when you walked in. If you're online with us, take a moment, maybe grab something from your pantry so you can participate with us in communion. It is going to be a great Sunday. Amen. If you'd like, before we begin, take a moment, share this out. If you're in the house, grab your phone, share this out. Online with us, share this out. Your friend, your family member may need to hear what's going to be said today. May need to experience Jesus today. Amen. Amen. Well, let's take a moment to pray. We are going to invite the King of Glory to visit us in a mighty way this morning. Will you pray with me? God, we honor you in this place today. Father, we look to you in this place today. We invite you here. Would you meet us here? Thank you for showing up here in this place today, in our homes today. God, meet us here. Let us not walk away from this moment unchanged. God, change us. Change us today. And Father, this morning we join with the saints all across the world, all across the nations, all across the cities of this world to join our voices in worship and adoration and praise to you, God, for you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. King of glory. King of glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's worship the King today. Amen. Yes, the world. Bow down and say you are king. 
worship you, we worship you. Yeah.
Bible promises us is there is an anointing of the Holy Spirit that breaks every yoke. And whatever, whatever you need today from the Lord, maybe you're frustrated with life, maybe you're depressed today, maybe you're wrestling with an addiction this morning, today. Maybe you have fears in your life. Maybe you don't know where your provision is going to come from. The Spirit of God, the anointing of God, that's God's Spirit. What you're experiencing today online and in-house is, is the presence of the Lord. That might not be common for you in your church upbringing, but there's something about the presence of God when we allow Him opportunity to be with us. It doesn't make us weird or do things crazy necessarily, but it makes us aware that there's something supernatural, there's something different going on in our lives. So what you're sensing today is not about a great song or just great music, it's about God's presence. There's a verse of scripture someone shared, said this this past week, he said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I want to ask you in this moment when it says pour your spirit out, that you would be bold enough, needy enough, recognize God's reality in your life, that you could say, Lord, I need what I sense is here. I may not understand it fully at this junction place in my life, but I need what is here. The young man who was brought up in church, so I knew church. I knew the verses, knew the, knew the stanzas of the hymns. But I didn't really know Jesus and the Spirit of God. And when I did, it changed my life. And maybe you know that, maybe you don't. If you don't today, today, this moment would be a day to say, Jesus, I need you to pour your Spirit out on me. And the wonderful thing about that, it, it, it makes you uniquely you. All of a sudden, you begin to realize who you are and, and why God created you and, and purpose and significance come into your life. And, and that happened to me. I wasn't until 20 years old. That began to happen to me. If you're a young person here today, and great to have you in the service with us this morning for this, so that you would do that right now. Don't wait till you're 20. Some of you way past due if you're waiting on 20. Right now. I need to know you, Jesus, in a real way. Because this world's coming at you hard and fast. And it's not going to slow down. And Jesus becomes an anchor in your life. An anchor of faith, an anchor of hope, an anchor of grace. Would you just right where you are this morning, maybe hold out your hands, lift your hands to the Lord if you're comfortable doing that. Or hold them out in front of you and say, Lord, I, I want you to pour your spirit out in me and on me. And for a moment this morning, we're going to receive communion in just a moment. But it's about this moment, I think, right now, church, online, really join me here because I feel God's touching you right where you are in your home, your office today. Lord, I, I need you today. I, I say that to you this morning. Lord, I need you today. You know, I know we all have a life beyond church. <laughs> we all have a church face on this morning. I'm talking about that other face. <laughs> Come on. Lord, I need you today in my family. I need a miracle in my relationship. Maybe with your spouse, maybe with a child. See, the answer is Jesus. Come on. The answer is Jesus. So, Lord, today, right now, just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sin. Cleanse my life. Come into my heart. I want to live for you. Change my life, oh God. Pour your spirit out on me today. Pour your spirit out on me today. Pour your spirit out on my house today, on my neighborhood today, on my workplace today. Pour your spirit out on me today. Let's just sing it softly as a prayer. Can we sing it real softly? Pour your spirit out. Will you sing it as a prayer right now? Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Spirit. 
Sunday, I need a microphone to ask them where they're from. So, guys, just come on stage. Uh, you, I'll borrow your mic a minute, Pastor, all right? So, um, just by, by way of quick introduction here, I have two mics going on, so I just need to use this in just a minute. But um, online family, welcome. Maybe type in where you're from there, because I, I praise the Lord that he's given us such a diverse international community. So, we've asked a few of our international friends, I uh, think, think, Pastor, I don't know the last time we counted, have over 30-something nations represented. And, of course, we've got our Hispanic church down the hill. There's, I think it's 13 or 15 nations represented there this morning. Uh, I, I love the fact that God has given us such a diverse uh, love for the nations. Are you with me on that, church? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm going to run quickly down the line and let them just tell you what nation they're from. All right? That's all I need this morning. All right? All right? Just give us a little background, a little quick. Yeah, one word. All right, ready? We'd have a whole lot of sermons if I turned to English. Representing Ecuador. Zimbabwe. Friend, this is Pastor Fred Shumba from Zimbabwe who just happened to stop in today. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Pastor, welcome. Philippines. Switzerland. And the world. Norway and Texas. Norway and Texas. We'll count Texas. Yeah. <laughs> the Bahamas. India. India. Korea. Korea. Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad. Well, I'm a mutt. All right. I got three. <laughs> <laughs> Spain, Mexico, and Italy. That'll work. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Can we give a hand to the Lord? He is, he is the God of the nations. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Amen. Oh, you can stay here, stand here, and have, receive communion with us. Can you do that, Pastor Indar? I'll turn it to you. Amen. You all want to stand with us. Grab your packet there if you have one for communion. If you don't have one, you can raise your hand. The ushers will note. And if you are online, we want to welcome you to partake communion with us. Uh, find some juice, find some bread, and we'll partake of it together. The bread you have in your hand represents what Jesus did for us on the cross. He died on the cross. His body was nailed to the cross on our behalf. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And today we celebrate this with us and with all those who are online and all those around the world. We celebrate the communion on the first Sunday of the month. And thank you for doing that. You know, we are reminded God did pour out his spirit in the last days. And then he said, and, but you shall receive power after the Spirit of God has come upon you and you will be what? Witnesses. And that's why, that's why, one of the main reasons why God's Spirit is upon us so that we could be witnesses. Thanking you, Father, for all our missionaries all over the world, for those who are persecuted for the sake of the gospel, those who are killed for your very name. Today we pray for them. We pray for all those who we support, all those who we, we, we have a relationship with. We are praying for them, Lord, today. And as we partake of this communion, we remember why we do this. We do this because of the love of Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection on our behalf. We apply all that grace to our lives today as we partake Bless his bread, bless his juice. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you partake with me? Let's partake of the juice.
Amen. If you if you remain standing for a moment or two, we'll continue a little bit of worship. Allow these guys to come off the platform and then we'll continue with our service. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. we can sit down or not. This is what I call church, right? Yes. Amen. Well, if you, before you're seated, will you wave to somebody, turn to the camera back there and say, hey, all our online friends and family, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You may have your seats for a moment. What a special day. Special day. Pastor Ken, just want to talk to you for a moment. Welcome guests today. What a great time. But a few of you, first time back since COVID. So thank you for being with us today. And a couple of new friends been online with us. Uh, here first time today. So welcome everybody online. Welcome if you're first time online with us. Please let us know you're there. And uh, you know, what a special day. Thank you for those of you that have been fasting and praying the last couple of days. I always look forward to the Sundays after we've been praying and fasting for a couple of days. They're just kind of energized a little more with God's presence, aren't they? Because whenever we uh, set aside and seek him, he shows up. So uh, in just a couple of moments, we've got a little video clip uh, we're going to show you just of some things coming up just to make you aware of. We have a little phrase around here that says church is more than Sunday morning. It just happens all week long, right? Connect groups and things of that nature. So that little video clip will come up next. But I want to pray for your family and I ask the Lord's blessing over you. Thank you for your financial giving to the Lord. And right after we see the video clip, I'll come back up and introduce a good friend. And we're going to talk about World Focus Week a little bit this week and what that's about in terms of our mission context. That's what today's about is celebrating the nations, uh, hearing from the Lord and seeing how we're going to just really reach out and support uh, the nations in this coming year. And I appreciate Pastor Indar who just shared communion with you, who leads that aspect of our ministry here. So let me just say a prayer for you and your family today. All right. Thank you for your giving. Father, I've just blessed every family here today. I pray you will meet every need that they have financially. Pray you'll give them healthy homes. You'll heal those who need to be healed today in their family. And that one that's wayward in their family, I pray that they will turn their hearts toward home today in the name of Jesus. You'll pro provide them finances, employment, 
And Lord, in our homes, in the area of relationship, Father, I pray we will come together as families and be one, one under God. Husbands, wives, children, grandchildren, and the like. We pray that today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, everybody. My name is Nathan Crane. I am the creative director here at Harvest. Welcome to today's service. Here's some things for you to know. Our annual Thanksgiving dinner for the Federation of the Blind takes place this Thursday. We're always blessed by this opportunity to serve our community, and we're so thankful for all of our Harvest family members who have donated time and food. However, we still need a few more food items. If you're willing and able to help us out, please see Teresa at the Information Center after church. Harvest ladies, it's time for another If Table breakfast gathering. If Table events are awesome ways to make new friends and have fun learning and growing together in Christ. The next If Table breakfast is this Saturday, November 13th in the alley. All attendees are asked to bring a store-bought breakfast food to share. Let us know you're coming by visiting the events section at the-harvest.org. Believe it or not, Christmas is right around the corner, and that means it's time to fill our Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. The joy of seeing a child open the boxes for the first time is just, it's incredible. We are so excited. Many of the children receive the shoe boxes for the first time in their life. We pray that these boxes will be used to bring a lot of happiness and joy, but more importantly, the gospel to each heart, all these little children around the world. No greater need and no greater time than right now for us to go out and serve boldly. This is what these shoe boxes are all about, to go out and bring a hope of Jesus Christ around the world. I'm just so amazed at what God does each and every year. This is an opportunity to impact the lives of millions of children, just like you've seen. But we need more boxes for next year. Every box is an opportunity for us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So thank you, and God bless each and every one. All right, good stuff, church. I appreciate the team of folks that make all that good stuff happen around here. So uh, a lot of good things going on. A uh, very special day. We, we love the nations. We love missions. And I have been praying this last week or so. Sally asked me, what are, what are we fasting for? You know, what, what's the reason for our fasting? And, and I noted myself, I, my prayer has been that our church, our church family would capture a heart for the nations and world missions, world evangelization. For God so loved the world. So what we've been doing for a number of years is, is doing faith promise. We'll talk a little bit about that in, in a few minutes. I'll be back up and, and talk with you about faith promise and how you can participate in helping us reach the nations of the world. But this morning, a, a dear friend, Pastor Willie Crew from South Africa, him and Lydia are here today, and uh, they have been such a special blessing to us over the years. He first introduced this idea and concept of faith promise to me, walking across that parking lot a little over 15 years ago. He said, you ever heard of Faith Promise? And it's just been awesome. And we've used that over, well, almost two decades now, probably, of supporting international ministries and work and on many continents of the world. So um, uh, one of the greatest missionary strategists in the world today, I believe personally, a lot of great days we could sit and, and talk about him a lot this morning, but I know he wants to get on with his message a little bit. He's going to bring for us. I asked him to talk to us about what's going on in the world today. Where are we? So uh, Willie, would you come? Willie Crew, would you guys give him a welcome? Many of you know him, but he's new face to many. Appreciate you, appreciate you, my friend. God bless you. Yeah, man. Thank you. Well, good morning. What a blessing to be back in harvest. We, uh, we left here about 20 months ago, I guess, and um, got locked down in South Africa with COVID and couldn't leave. Strangely enough, we stayed out of trouble while we were in, in South Africa. And then we got here and within five days, my wife was in hospital for 10 days with COVID and, um, and then 14 days on oxygen. But we're good now, so praise God for that. But it's good to be back. Very good to be back with you and, um, and just to share with you this morning. As you heard, I am from South Africa. I 
I w founded the World Mission Center 32 years ago. I don't run it anymore. I've got some younger people that do that. But if you stepped out the door to the left, you'll get our table. Welcome to go and have a look at that. We, we train over 24,000 students in 97 countries to become missionaries that can reach their own people. And how many of you know that's a good idea? They know the culture. They know the language. They live at the economic reality of where they're at. And we're seeing them do amazing stuff around the world. And, uh, and uh, surely we're just a little speck in what God's doing. But it is a privilege to be able to do that. When I was preparing for this morning, I, I really struggled uh, because I, you know, missions has now become such a big thing. We used to be able to quickly just talk about missions for a couple of minutes, but, but the world is changing so fast. I think you'll agree with me that, that where we used to talk about unreached people groups because of the migration of people around the world, people groups don't work anymore, <laughs> you know, because they're everywhere. And there's so many other you know, aspects of missions that, that just makes it difficult. So I felt like I want to give you an, just an overall perspective this morning um, and, and then let you go home and let you go and think through some of the things I'm saying because they really are critical as we look toward the strategy of finishing the task of world evangelization. And that will take every church and every member around the world to participate in that process. Matthew 24, verse 14, Jesus makes a statement. He makes the statement after his disciples had asked him, they said, when will the end times come? When will the, when will the end come, they said. And, uh, and in actual fact, if you read the beginnings of Matthew 24, Jesus speaks of the fact you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars and nations rising against nations and famines and earthquakes and, and etc. You In some cases, you'll be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. You'll be hated by nations. The increase of wickedness, love of many people would grow cold. Those that stand firm to the end will be saved. That can preach, but we won't go there this morning. But then Jesus ends that whole statement by, in, in verse 14, he says, that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And allow me just for a moment to say to you two things about that passage of Scripture. The one is Jesus says, you, this gospel of the kingdom. And there is certainly a difference between the gospel of salvation and the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of salvation is bringing somebody to Jesus and now you have met him, he's your savior, and certainly you're on your way to heaven. But the gospel of the kingdom are those of us around the world that love and now serve him, that impact our nations, impact our society, impact our cities, impact those around us, because it's the kingdom that ultimately is, is being established by Jesus. Does that make sense? I could spend the morning talking to you about the gospel of salvation versus the gospel of the kingdom, and I believe they are both equally as important. There's not one more important than the other. But that's what Jesus said there. And he said, There'll be, you'll be preaching this gospel of the kingdom as a testimony to all nations. And many of us think that when we read that, it's the geographical nations in the world that we, you know, that we uh, kind of see on a map. But, but really, the word Jesus is using there is the word ethnos in the Greek, which means ethnic groups, people with their own language and their own culture. And how many of you know there are more ethnic groups around the world than what their countries? And if you really start breaking that down, and I'm not going to get into numbers this morning, but you break that down, just in the north of India, there are over 2,800 different people groups just in that one part of the world. So Jesus is saying every one of them need to hear. Why? You go to Revelations, he says, you know, that in that great throne room of God, there will be people from every tribe, nation, language. We'll all be together. Wouldn't it be a wonderful day when that happens? I want to make my first statement this morning after saying that, and that is that we are living in the last days. I'm absolutely convinced of that. I pray you are too. And uh, I believe that Jesus could return any moment. 
I believe that we as Christians should have our one eye on the sky watching if Jesus is coming back and our other eye on the mission field or the harvest field doing that which he's called us to, the reason why we are on the, on the earth at this time. In John chapter 9 and verse 4, Jesus makes a very interesting statement. He says, I must, that's Jesus speaking. He says, I must do the work of my Father while it is day because nighttime is coming. And I want to tell you, when you look at what's happening around the world, you have to agree with me this morning. If we look at the big picture, you've got to agree with me that nighttime is coming faster than you and I can imagine. The, the chaos around the world is kind of serious, right? We're talking about serious moral decay. Um, we're talking about people that just openly you know, confess they're atheist, agnostic, or maybe nothing at all. We're talking about younger people that are disillusioned at a level that you can't believe. I mean, just in my own country in South Africa, between the ages of 18 and 25, 72% of that age group has got no work. They're unemployed. I mean, you talk about a recipe for disaster. There it is. We, we talk about a total disregard for the Bible, total disregard for the Word. We talk about, you know, people that are pushing God out of society. I don't have to tell you much about that in America. It is frightening. It is scary to see that. And I wonder if people really understand what they're doing. Invalidating the gospel, drugs and violence and abortion and, and you know, lack of respect in families and at the highest levels of society. You know, it's almost like truth has left the planet. Let me not go there. What I want to say to you is my second thing I want to say to you this morning is all of this chaos and all of these things that are happening is creating a vortex, it's creating a, a vacuum, right? And in that vacuum, I believe, is the greatest harvest of all time. It is the end time harvest, the harvest before Jesus returns. And so it's very important for you and I to understand that this morning. Otherwise, otherwise we, may, we may just wonder, you know, what this is all about. And you can get involved in so much bad news that you won't know where to move to next. Interesting statement or uh, uh, questionnaire that was sent to a bunch of young people in America some time ago. What is it that you want from the church? And I want to tell you, when I heard that question, I thought, I really want to know the answer to that because what would they say? Would they say it's the lights and the music and the this and the that? And it had nothing to do with that. You know what their answer was? Their answer was what the most important thing we need from the church is doctrine. I just about fell out my chair when I heard that. Why? Because it made me realize, and it's not just the young people, it made me realize in this vacuum, people are looking for reality. People are looking for truth. People are looking for a force greater than all of these negative forces around the world. And people, frankly, looking for God. In this vacuum... I want to challenge you this morning, and I know I'm in a good place when I stand in the harvest. I want to challenge you this morning. Do everything you can to prepare to participate in the harvest. I spoke to a friend of mine some time ago, has a big wheat farm in South Africa, and I phoned him at 11 o'clock at night. I thought I'd get him at home, you know, and he was on the combine harvester. I said, what in the world are you doing on there? He says, I'm busy harvesting wheat. I said, why would you be harvesting wheat at 11 o'clock at night? He says, Willie, every minute that goes by, wheat falls on the ground and I can never pick it up again. I want to say to you this morning, what's going on around the world is negative, but what's going on in the kingdom is unbelievable. Don't let the wheat fall and not pick it up. Make sure you are trained. And if you think you're not trained, if you've been sitting under the Word of God Sunday by Sunday by Sunday, just open your mouth. You may be surprised what will come out on the other side. Amen. The third thing I want to tell you is this. The greatest day in the church 
is not yesterday or in history. The greatest day of the church is today and in the future. And you and I are a part of it. As we walk out of those doors, we're walking into our mission field. And I want to tell you what, we are in the greatest moment ever that we are alive at this stage is a privilege from the Lord. Make no mistake about it. Which leads me to the third thing that is a, that's like a takeaway. I want you to remember it for the rest of your life while we're on earth. And that is this, when you see the chaos... Look for the harvest. Don't focus on the chaos. Does that make sense? There's enough to focus on and the enemy would like to keep us there. But I want to say to you, don't focus on the chaos. Rather, look for the harvest because it may be your neighbor. It may be the person you're working with. It may be the person down the street. It may be somebody on the other side of the world. But the fact is there are people out there asking desperate questions. Where is God in all of this? And let me make my next statement to you this morning which is equally important. There is a great harvest in the world today. Did you hear me? I did not say there will come a great harvest in the world. I did not say one day we will see it. There already is a great harvest in the world. We are at a deficit in America as much as what we're at deficit in South Africa because we don't see some of those things. And I believe the day will come that we will. Make no mistake about it, it was a good place to say amen. But there is a harvest in the world that is phenomenal. If you take the countries, the 20 countries where the church is growing the fastest in the world, not one of those countries is in the West. I don't know if you know this, but the, 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 the weight of Christianity has shifted from the West to the North and the South. Uh, sorry, to the East and the South. There are more Christians in Asia and in Africa than what they are in the rest of the Western world. I think it was about 1900, somewhere around there in Africa, there was like 8.9 million Christians. It's estimated today that there are over 300 million born again believers in Africa and estimated in the, that's right. Estimated in the next 20 to 30 years, there could be over 600 million born-again believers in Africa. There is no church continentally in the world growing faster than the church in Africa. It's fascinating. But when you see the top 20 countries, not one is in the West, and 11 of those 20 are Muslim countries where the church is growing the fastest. Where is it growing? Well, it's interesting that the secular media like BBC would make a, a program and, and report that the, the fastest growing church in the world is the country of Iran. Imagine. It is good news, but let me tell you something. That's typical of God using, using the hard things. You know, that guy at your work that you say will never come to Christ Jesus likes to focus on those kinds of people. Flying in the face, oh man, let me not go there, but flying in the face of quote-unquote religious leaders that think they can stump out, uh, stump out of Christianity. There is no building. There's hardly a leader in Iran, but the church is exploding. What about Cuba? My goodness, we are training We've got over a hundred live schools in Cuba training hundreds of people. And as we speak, because of COVID, we can't get close to them at the moment. But we've got over 130 waiting for us to start another 130 schools. The country of Nepal, amazing. It's the only Hindu kingdom in the world. And the, the Lord is working in this place in a, in a manner that you can hardly believe. In Vietnam... In the last 10 years, the church has grown by over 600%. We can talk about Cambodia and many others, but because of time this morning, I won't go there. Now I have a question for you. 
What is our greatest challenge that faces us today in missions? What is the greatest challenge that faces all of us here, those of us online, wherever you're listening? What is it? I want to say the most important is that we need to work where the need is greatest. Why do I say that? You must hear it. It's a serious statement. 73% of missionaries around the world are working in Christian countries. Don't get me started on that because I think that's ridiculous. Whilst on some of the unreached places in the world, we're finding... We're finding maybe two, maybe three percent of missionaries working in places like India and China and etc. We need to finish the job. How many of you think there's a moment that we finish the work? That's what Matthew 24, 14 said. It says that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. There is a moment when the task of world evangelization finishes and I believe we need to do everything we can to reach the unreached, the least reached, etc., etc. around the world. Where is the greatest need in the world today? I mention a few only because of time. North India has over 400 million people. Listen carefully. 400 million people. That's more than the USA's population. Those people, those 400 million, have not heard the name of Jesus. How many of you think they deserve it? Somebody once said, what gives you the right to hear the gospel twice when there's so many that haven't heard it once? And it's the truth. Make no mistake about it. That's why Pastor Ken is saying we need to get into, we need to get into a situation where our church becomes a, a world vision church. I mean, we're doing what God's saying to us in terms of the world. Some of those unreached places in the world today, Bangladesh, China, Pakistan, seriously un, unreached. And if there's something you want to pray about, Pray about Afghanistan. Afghanistan, listen to me, this is so interesting. Afghanistan very recently had one of the most, one of the fastest growing churches in the world. Until the disastrous happenings of the last couple of days or weeks. And now the Afghans, Christians, have to flee for their lives because if they get caught by some of those radicals, they will be killed. I was talking to a church the other day, one of the pastors the other day, they said to me, out of their congregation alone, they decided to fly eight of those Christians out of Afghanistan to the States just to try and save them from being killed. Where's the greatest need? The refugees of Europe, they have flooded Europe. They're Iranian-speaking, they're Farsi-speaking, they're Arabic-speaking, Turkish. I mean, places where you hardly can reach, and yet these refugees across Europe, my heart is right there at the moment because I think we need to do everything we can to reach those refugees. And by the way, God has sent some of them here, and I know some of us don't like that, but why don't we use the opportunity to reach them for Jesus? That was a good place to say Amen. I'm not saying bring more. I'm saying let's lead so they're here. You ask me this morning, Willie, how can we be involved? How can I be involved? Well, you certainly can be involved in prayer. I would challenge you, find a map, stick it on the wall somewhere. And every day, just lay your hands on one of the countries in there and just pray for it. And, and just say, Lord, I don't know what's going on in this nation, but let me just pray for it. I'm not talking about just a little prayer. I'm talking about real serious intercessory prayer. I pray to God we can see that raised up in Colombia. People that will come together and that will weep and cry before the Lord for nations to be saved. How else can you be involved? You can be involved by going. There are many opportunities for that. And, and there is a desk outside that you can go and, go and visit if you need to afterwards. But you can also be involved in sending 
You see, right now, we used to send missionaries, and we still do, and that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. We used to send missionaries from the West to you know, some of these, uh, these countries. Now we're finding in those countries, they're born again. They love Jesus. They're bugging us when they're saying to us, just please train us, because if you train us, we will reach those that are around us, and the least reaches close to them. They understand the language. They understand the, 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 the financial culture of those people there. They understand the culture itself. We could be funding a whole lot of people to do a whole lot of work at a negligible amount of what we are paying at the moment. But you can also do it by giving. And you say, oh my goodness, here he comes. He's going to speak about, mission, about money. I am. But I want, to, I, want to give you, I want to give you the greatest deal that you have ever imagined. And I really and honestly mean that. I want to talk to you about this thing called the faith promise. Some of you may know it. One of the gentlemen after the first service that I've known since I've come to this church, I don't know, 18 years ago, Pastor Ken, one of them came to me and says, I've never heard faith promise being explained like that before. I was like, okay, well, then if that's true of you, and he is a giver, by the way, let me, let me tell you what it is. Faith promise, the promise is to the Lord, not to the church. The promise is, Lord, if you will release and supply finance to me, I will give it. In other words, the converse is true. If you don't supply it, I don't have to give it. Makes sense. It's a way for the church or all of us together to give to, 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 give to missions in a way that you could never do on your own. And by the way, everyone can be involved whether you are part of the harvest, whether you're just a visitor this morning, whether you're online and visiting online, whatever the case may be, you all can be involved. Old people, young people can all be involved. I remember back in South Africa, I, one day I was taking up the faith promise and a young man, he was in eighth grade, he wrote on his, he wrote on his card, he didn't know how much money to write there, but he wrote on his card, everything above my allowance, Ken, am I right? I've got it right this time. Everything above my allowance, I will give to missions. So I thought, that's a bold statement for a young man, you know? And, and so a couple of months later, I saw the pastor. I said, how's that young man doing? He says he's giving between four and 500 rand a month to missions. I mean, that's a huge amount of money in South Africa. I said, how in the world is he doing that? He says, well, he, he knows something about computers. I think it's dangerous, but he knows something about it. And people keep asking him, come and help me. And then they pay him some money and he keeps giving it. And the more he gives, the more people give him work. And the more he gives work, the more he gives. It was unbelievable. I actually said to the pastor, I'd love to meet that young man in 10 or 20 years time. He'll be one of the greatest givers to missions because of the heart that was born there. Everybody can be involved. Every cent that is raised in faith promise in this church goes directly to the mission field. None of it is used for the church's budget or the church's finances. It all goes, whatever comes in, goes out. It's not, the faith promise is not a part of your tithes or your offerings. In actual fact, it's not a part of your budget. It's not a part of your salary or wage check at the end of the week or the end of the month. So you say, well, where in the world do we find it then? Let me say as well, faith promise is not a pledge. So you'll never be asked for it at any time. A pledge is when you're going to add to the building and the pastor says, well, or whoever, the leaders say, you know, would you like to pledge toward this? And you say, I'm going to give $500 and somebody may come and ask you for it. But the faith promise, nobody will come and ask you. It's, a, it's something between you and God. Does that make sense? It'll teach you and me to walk by faith. How many of you think we need that? And the future will hold me accountable. It, the future, the church is going to have to know how to walk in faith. I'm talking every member in this church, 
every person online, you're going to have to know how to walk in faith. You say to me, how does it work? Well, I'll try and give you an example in my own life. And it wasn't a faith promise, but it's the same principle. We were busy in South Africa reaching 100 unreached people groups. And, and there was a moment that we had trained 483 short-term missionaries. And we were now going to send them to the mission field. And just to send them from wherever they were to the, to the point where they're going to work was going to cost us $200,000. And we had put it all together. Excitement was great in the World Mission Center. And then, and then on the Monday, the team was leaving on the Friday. All the teams were leaving on the Friday. On the Monday, my guy, the friend, one of my workers at the time, came and knocked on my office door. He said, I want to talk to you. I said, sure. He said, Willie, the teams are leaving on Friday. I'm like, praise God, man. We've been working on this for months to make that happen. He says, yeah, that's right. And, and he says, uh, we need uh, 700,000 rand, or at the time, about $200,000. And that was already cold water over my head. And then he decided to pull the ice bucket out. And he said, we have about, I don't know, ten dollars or $15,000 in the bank. And then he asked me this question. He said, he said, Willie, should I stop the teams from leaving? Should I delay it before, before they go? And I was caught in a process of decision-making that was one of the hardest things in my life. And I sat listening for a while and I said to him, don't you dare do that. And everything inside of me was like, God, <laughs> whatever. Three days later, I'm driving in my car in Pretoria. And the international division of our bank phones me. They never do, but they, for some reason they phoned me. They phoned me. They said, Mr. Crew, we have, we have, a, we have a draft for you. Obviously money from, from overseas. And when he said, we have a draft for you, I, I said, um, I, I didn't ask where it came from. I didn't say what the currency was. I said, how much is it? And he was quiet for a moment. He was working out the currency situation. And he, and he said to me, it's just over $200,000. I was ready to let the car do cartwheels. I mean, I was so happy. I was like, you couldn't believe it. And a couple of minutes later, I started to cry uncontrollably. I said, God... How many times have I missed you because I wouldn't wait in faith for the 11th hour? What's the difference between what I've just told you and faith promise? No difference. You may fill in on your little card. You may fill in there, I'm going to believe God for $50 a month or $100 a month or whatever. And, and you know what it means? It means if it doesn't come, because you're not going to take it out your budget, right? If it doesn't come, what are you going to do? You're going to have to get on your knees. And you're going to have to say, Lord, where's that $200,000? The teams are leaving. And you're going to have to pray that in. Like any other mission organization, any other pastor or whatever, you're going to have to pray that in. It, it behooves you to do that. It's not just a few missionaries that's on the board that prays in faith. Every one of us should step out in faith. And I'm not talking about $200,000 this morning. You may decide... When you hear the Lord, it's only $10 a month. Let me tell you, $10 a month times everybody sitting in this room is one huge amount of money. Does that make sense? It may be 50, it may be 100, maybe 500. I don't know what it is that the Lord will tell you. But the fact is, whatever it is, comes close to the end of the month. Lord, where's that money? And how many of you know we all get money in a given year that you didn't budget for? Let me see your hands. 
Don't lie to me, it's true. I'll tell you a good example. Just take, just open your next birthday card and find a $10 bill in there and I'll tell you it wasn't in your budget. And my question is, who says it's yours? You say it's my birthday. It was given to me. And I'm saying to you, you may be absolutely right, but why don't you just, just ask the Lord, Lord, what is this? Is this you, Lord? What is it for? And sometimes Father will say, go spoil yourself, man. Go down the road. Go and have an ice cream. Sometimes he'll say, it is seed in your hand. Sow it. And I want to tell you what, stop eating your seed. We can preach about that all morning. I won't, but me, you know what I'm saying? There's a tremendous impact when we all add up our bit of faith to create a great amount of faith. And I want to close and hand over to Pastor Ken in a moment. But I want to say to you, even if you are, you know, we had one church in South Africa where the members took the cards to their friends that were in other churches that didn't have a mission program and got their friends to join. They were, they were multiplying their faith promise 100% plus because everybody was getting involved in funding world evangelization. You'll be given a card in a few minutes. You'll be asked to ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want me to believe you for? It's something between you and God. And then you'll be asked to fill out the card in faith, knowing that you've made a faith promise to God. If you supply it, I'll give it. I remember a medical doctor once in South Africa. When he listened to the Lord, the Lord told him the craziest number. I can't even remember what it was, but just let's call it $1,330.50 or something, you know. And so he wrote it on the card, and, and he didn't know why it was like that, but he'd heard the Lord. And, and on Monday morning, he walked into the surgery, and his accounts department lady came to him and said, Doctor, that person that had been owing us this money for about eight years and had never paid it, we tried to get it, we couldn't. He says, we just received the check. And he took the check and looked at it, and it was exactly the amount that he'd written on his faith, card, faith promise card. And the Lord honored his faith. May God give us all the grace in these last days to do exactly what he says to us to do. Pastor Ken. Good. Thank you, sir. Wow, that's inspirational, isn't it? It kind of makes my blood start churning a little bit. I, I want to close. I'm going to ask our guys to, to put a card in your hand, a Faith Farmers card. So, guys, we'll do that quickly right away. If you don't have a pen, get one, because I want to ask you to fill that out today. I'm going to walk you right through it. Faith Promise is our commitment to missions. And I want to ask you to participate in that prayer. Lord, what would you have me do? God doesn't say anything to you. I accept that. But uh, our missionary guys, you might want to put some of them up on the screen there for us. Now, if you would, please. Uh, the next page as well. It's, it's, it's not, uh, as a pastor, I'm kind of uh, timid maybe about you know, asking for funds and receiving offerings and things like that. Unless it's for somebody else. Come on. This is not for me. This is not for Harvest. This is for these guys on that screen. And you know what they're doing today? And we talk to them often. Pastor Indar does weekly as a Zoom group with 15 pastors from around the world on Thursday mornings. Do you know what they're doing? They're believing God for their churches, to build their churches, sometimes to feed their family, sometimes to feed an orphanage. I mean, they're, they're, uh, they're just doing that. I want to help them. And today I want to ask you to help me help them. Got it? I want to ask you to help me help them. And how are we going to do that? Willie just explained it so well. Everybody have a card. If you don't have a card, raise your hand. I want everybody, young, young guys as well. Everybody, if you're, if you're 8, 9, 10 and can read and write, you need a card. 
If you don't, if you don't, well, I don't have a job. Well, we just talked about that. You don't need a job because this is not money that's in your bank account. It's not money that's in your budget. It's something we're going to pray and believe for. Now, here was a big thing for me. When Willie and I walked across that parking lot many years ago, the thing I saw, this is your pastor talking now, right? Uh, here again, everybody get one, not just mom and dad or not just spouse, everybody, because I want everybody to pray. Because each one of us online, you can do this as well. You can go to our website and there's just a tag right there. You can, you can tag on that. It'll take you right to the place. So it's not just for us in-house. Online, you can do that. Uh, it's on our webpage. So please go there and join us and participate in this. I want you to pray. We'll go pause just for a moment. And I want you to begin to pray and say, Lord, what is what do you want me to do? What do you want me to believe for? That's, that missionary that's believing for funding for his church. Come on, everybody, you can do that. And here's the thing I was going to say. It taught me, it taught me from you guys' standpoint, we're going to learn how to hear from God. Everybody here, everybody listening, when you begin to listen, you will hear something from God. And when you hear it, then you believe for it, look for it, come on. Then you receive it, and then you give it. Wow, isn't that how we live out our faith? So this can be a very awesome learning curve for us. In fact, someone mentioned, I'll take it home to our kids if they're home. You know, take it and sit down with your young children and say, hey, let's pray about what God might put in your hand. Would you begin to pray right now, everybody, and just say, Lord, what, what, what can I give to help these missionaries reach, reach the people in their communities. Some of them live in cities. Some of them live out very much out in tribal areas as well. Would you pray? I will pause. I'll be quiet just for a minute. Let everyone take a minute and pray. Online, pray with us. Pause and listen. pray. Listen, Lord, what do you say? What are you saying to me, Father, that I can help this coming year, this coming season, over this next year, I can believe and receive and be a part of world evangelization. You know what I found? It's usually the first number. If you're, if you're a business person like me, you start negotiating. <laughs> down. <laughs> Come on. I've done it with God. I know. I've been there. I've, I've taken faith promise. Got to put a number on my heart and then I'm negotiating. Well, I could do this. I could do this. I'm going to tell you, God wants to show himself big on your behalf. Believe and receive for the missionary, not for Pastor Ken, not for Harvest Church, not for Willie Crew. Wow. And God, you'll see God doing move in so many ways. Would you fill that out now for us? Would you name, address, email? We'll send you a letter uh, kind of on a monthly basis. Pastor Inner does that. We're not going to ask for it. We're not going to come knock on your door. We're not going to solicit it. It's between you and God. Would you fill that out? We're going to take them up this morning. the reason I'm saying that. We're going to take them up right now. Online, you need to do that right now for me. Go online and put that in there. Brothers, if you'll prepare, we'll receive them. Take them up. It likes look like you're hearing well. Just one or two of you are still finishing. So let me ask you to do this. Just kind of turn it upside down and pass it down to the end of your row. And guys, if you'll come take them up and then hand them to me, I want to pray over them. Amen. Guys, you can come on out and just play a little bit for me there. Would be great. Praise the Lord. God is so good. He is so faithful. Thank you for everybody helping out there. If you're struggling hearing from a number, you can sit here a few minutes after church a little bit and just hear that number. As minuscule as it, you might think it is, I want you to see God work on your behalf. Amen. See God move. 
so we can put this into the hands of our missionaries in the coming, coming season, coming year. So if you're still writing, there'll be a bucket on the way out, but I want to get them right now. Guys, if you can bring them on to me, if you got them, just kind of come on. That's good. Anybody else just hold it up so they can see that you got one. Coming down. Thanks, Blythe, for helping. Thank you, guys. Bring them to me if you got them. Good deal. Thanks, Byron, for your help there, sir. But I said the Lord is good. Um, if, you're, if you're writing out a check today, then it, you would make them to harvest or whatever. But I'm really hoping that you will pray. If the Lord spoke to you and you know what it is and you want to do it, excellent. But it's not so much I need your offering today as I am you hearing the Lord and moving forward. Of course, if you have something the Lord's put on your heart to do this morning, of course, to harvest. It all goes in our missions account under Pastor Indar's direction. Thank you so much. Anybody else? I want to pray over these today. Everybody say, the Lord's good. Amen, amen. I'll, while we're collecting these, I'll tell a quick story about the willingness to give. You know, Willie, I, uh, this was way back in the day, and I didn't preach. I was principal in a Christian school, and I wasn't out very much, and I preached at a little small church on a Sunday night. And they gave me an honorarium. It was $750. That's a big honorarium for a little guy like me in a little, in a little small church. I was driving home, and the Lord said, I want you to give that to the worship leader of the church where you are. <laughs> Anybody been there before? <laughs> I'm reminded of Daffy Duck, right? Mine, 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 it's all mine. No, it's not. You know, we had a... Uh, a young couple going out of service here, and I'm going to close right here. Thank you. Thank you guys for responding to the Lord. This is awesome. Going out this morning, and, and I, I just happen to know them well, and a uh, young couple, young young, young child. They, they gave a sizable gift last year, well, way beyond what? Just way beyond. And I just happened to remember, so I tapped my shoulder and said, thank you, man, for what, what you did last year for Faith Promise. Here were his words. It's all good, Pastor. I'm just the middle man. Come on. I mean, that's all I am. I'm just the middle man. I'm just hearing from God, putting in a mission friend's hands. Just the middle man. May I pray? Would you stand? I want to pray for you this morning. Pray over these today online. Join me in this prayer. Maybe some prayer hands there to know you're praying with me. Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you for everyone that stepped out in faith, hearing your voice, and then saying, Lord, I will, I will pray. I will believe for that money to come in. And Lord, then I'll, I will give it to my church and help mission work around the world with those folks that we are connected with. Father, I thank you for that today. I thank you for everyone here, everyone present online with us. I pray that their faith will rise. I pray that you'll provide the miracle. Put it in their hand, Lord. And then they'll faithfully obey and bring it to the house of the Lord. And we'll see and hear great reports from the nations as the harvest is ripening and is ripe around the world. In Jesus' name. Can I get a big shout this morning? Amen, amen. Thank you. God bless you. Ruth, come join us. And uh, praise the Lord. I'll be back on a two-week series next week. So let me invite you back next week. I'm going to talk, I think I'm going to talk about the power of praise and worship since we're entering Thanksgiving time. So it's going to be awesome. Uh, just put that out there. So God bless you online. Thank you. Ruth, toss it to you. Yes, what a great Sunday together. Amen. It has been wonderful, powerful. Thank you, Pastor Willie, as well, for bringing that word to us this morning. If it's your first time here at Harvest or your first time joining us online, we would enjoy getting to know you, meeting you, connecting with you further. You can let us know a couple of ways that it was your first time in the house. There's a connect card on the seat in front of you. Drop by our information center after service um, online. New to Harvest in the comments. You, any of you can also um, visit our digital options and fill out a quick form there so we would know that you are here with us today. I also want to invite you, if you are new around Harvest, to our upcoming welcome dinner. This is next Sunday night at 5.30. 
It's just a place for us to get to know each other a little more. You can get to know Harvest a little bit. We can get to know you. We'll have dinner together. If you are interested in that, you can RSVP in the house. Again, at our information center this morning, you can also RSVP on our website. For all of our students, your usual Empower service that takes place tonight. We are moving down the street to Northside Baptist Church tonight for their one night. This is um, a time where some churches across the Midlands, some students across the Midlands are coming together again for one night. There's gonna be pizza, games, worship. Clayton King is gonna be there speaking. So don't miss it. Make sure to meet us there tonight at six o'clock. If you have questions about that, please see your student ministry leaders, Calais or Jen, for information about that. For those of you here, as you um, leave this morning, again, thank you for being here online. Thank you for being with us. As you leave today, you noticed um, there were some tables in our foyer of some of our mission organizations. We encourage you to just walk a little slower, take a moment, maybe visit some of those tables this morning on your way out. We also have our